I want to remind you of two things, or just a few things real quickly. On the screen, there's a question that I want you to be able to answer. The question is, who are we? Who are we as a church? Who are we as a people? Every one of us needs to know who we are. Who is New Season? First of all, I want you to understand that New Season is about souls. We care about souls. What am I saying? I want you to understand that it is our desire as a church to grow people not in a relationship with the church but to grow people in a relationship with God. Amen. You hear it, me? We want people to grow in their relationship with God. New season is about souls. Secondly, new season is a place to serve. Every person in here, God has given you something that you can praise him with. I told you this morning, at the morning service, you know, sometimes God gives you a gift. You think you're misunderstood why he gave you the gift. So some of you, God says, I've given you the gift to cook. <laughs> and you thought that God gave you the gift to cook so that you can make those unruly, disrespectful children fat. So you've been cooking all your life. And you go like, oh, I can cook. And you enjoy cooking because you thought that God had gifted you to cook for these kids. And then they grow up and you realize, what those ungrateful bunch they are. And then you realize that there was a purpose that is beyond just you cooking for your children. That God can be praised in your cooking. Like we didn't know Sister Jacine know how to make fish until she blessed us with escovitch last week. And you realize that you could glorify God with your cooking. So everybody has a gift. Whatever your gift is, some people can speak, some people can dance, some people can sing. Some people are just nice. God has given you a gift. He's given you a gift. And this is a place where your gift has been given to be used to praise God and to edify the church. The church, the family of God, is not separate. Amen. We're not independent of each other. We'd like to think. That we're independent, but we are interdependent because we're a body. Somebody say body. And he says the body, the eye can't say I don't need the ear. And the ear can't say I don't need the eye and so on. Because we are interdependent. So my life is better because you're in it. And, and you're better because I'm in your life. Are you with me? Amen. So we're not independent of each other. We're interdependent on each other. That's why the body hurts when we don't do what we're supposed to do. Are you understanding? When we don't work together. Amen? Can you imagine that, you know, the legs get off of the bed and, you want, and they want to fall down. The legs had every plan to hold you up. But the mouth decided it ain't eating. So now the legs don't have the nourishment it needed to carry you because the mouth didn't eat. The body suffer when we don't do what we're supposed to do. Listen, New Season, I want you to hear me out very clearly. God brought us together for a purpose. He set this up. Why did God bring you and I together? You didn't know me from Adams. Where you come from in Jamaica, I ain't going there. 
And where I come from, you can't find. And God gave us visas and green card. We stood in the line on Oxford Road at different times in our lives. And he transferred us. And some of us, you thought he transferred you to New York. But you get to New York and realize you couldn't handle the rats. So you came down to Florida. And God, in his fullness of wisdom, designed to orchestrate us to be together. Why did God brought us together? It's purpose. You're a purpose for us. Hear me. And he's given you a gift and a talent to use to edify. What God has planned for me and what he has planned for you are married to each other. But you didn't know it. But as some of you will never be successful outside of your relationship with the person who's sitting next to you. Are you hearing me? So new season is a place for you to use your gift. And for God to do in you what he set for to do in your life before the foundation of time. Then thirdly, the third S, and this is four S's that our church is about. I want you to know them really well. If somebody stops you in the street, you should be saying, oh, what is this church? Oh, they have four S's that they use. Let me tell you what they are. Listen, you got to show love. People don't care about what you say that you are until you show them that you care. Some people live in this, unselfish, this selfish world and the only time they experience love is when they come to the house of God. That's why the house of God should never be a place where people are hurt and harmed. It's a place where people are enriched and built up. New season is about loving all people of all race, of all financial status. Amen. We don't care how you dress. Amen. We don't care what you look like, whether you have gold teeth, front teeth, Dan Gorgon, or you have piercing all over or tattoo all over. We don't, even, we don't care what you like, what you don't like, who you like and who you don't like. What we care about is loving you. So you look around, you see all these kids. Sometimes all they hear is people cuss, cuss, cuss them all day. And sometimes the only hug and the only love that they find is right here in this house. Are you with me? So this is a place where love is shown as a reason. At the end of the service, we dis 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 definitely ask you to love on somebody before you leave. It's something that will always be. So understand. Listen, it's about showing love to everybody. Amen? If you see anybody in here showing love, Anything other than love, I want you to go over them and tap. I said, that is not the new season way. Tell them, uh-uh, I saw that. That's not the new season way. That's not how you talk to people. That's not how you treat people. Love is a part of our church. It will always be. And the last one is to sow. Now, some people are okay with one, two, and three, but when they get to number three, number four, they, 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 they turned the butt sideways on the chair. <laughs> Let me help you. God has a way of doing things. It is God's way, not our way. So God has an economy that he operates. And let me explain to you how God operates. This is what people miss, all right? People think that the tide is some complicated stuff that confuses. You all hear too much TV. And so you all so confused about this tithing thing that some of you all don't even know what to believe. The Bible is clear. It says the tide's the Lord's. God's economy about the tithing is so that he will do his work in the land. The reason, listen, God doesn't come from heaven and open the door for you this morning. Brother Shaw did. Are you hearing me? So God has a way, the same way he gifted Brother Shaw to use his service to greet you this morning. He's given you the resources to take care of his economy in the land. It is your tithe that God says, I will use to take care of the house of God. The church doesn't sell mangoes. 
It is not Walmart. It's not Walgreens. It is not a profit-making business. It is where God has set up for you to bring your tithe. Your tithe doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. So what you do is when you get your pay or your resources, you take out your tithes because it's not yours. It's the Lord. So what God does is that he established a place because the tithe must be taken to the house of God. He takes it there. He said, this is my economy because when I give you, he said, that money take care of the house. It take care of the light. It take care of the rent. Amen. If somebody's sick and they're out on their luck, God says you minister to the widows and the, and the fatherless. Amen. He said, that's my economy. My, the way I do things in the land is through your obedience. God doesn't do anything in the land except through man. Are you hearing me? So your tithe is God's economy. It's not some, it's not some uh, hello, hello, bundle, bundle, bundle stuff that some church came up with. It's the word of God. So that if the people tithe, there is enough to take care of God's house. That's why I don't preach about tithe. That's why I don't take up four offerings. There's no plate going back and forth. And, you know, people tell stories about church. <laughs> One lady said, listen, I went to a church and the pastor come up. He counted the money. He sent the thing back. I said, is it enough? So she put her hand and take back out her offering. <laughs> As she said, that ain't enough is all I got. Give me my mind. We don't do that in this church. Because tithing is an act of your obedience, an expression of your love for the work and the things of God. This is not something that some pastors come up with to get your money. I don't get your money. Amen. Amen. I give mine just like you give yours. And I volunteer just like you volunteer. I, it's just the way it is here. So he said, you, the tide, this place, the place to sow because you've got to take your tide somewhere. Now, here's something. He said, if you tide, he said, I will bless it. Why is it that God wants to bless your tide? Let me, let, me, let me explain this to you. I want you to learn this because the devil has lied to so many of you. You get into this churchology. You get into this religious spirit. That you catch all over the place. And some of you sit and talk to some idiots that don't know what they're talking about. And they plant seeds into your heart and into your spirit. So no, you can't experience your blessing. Let me explain what the, how, why God blesses the tithe. This is why he blesses the tithe. God says the way I do my work in the land financially is through the tithe of my people. So you bring your tithe. No, God says, that's good. She's faithful. Amen. So God says, now I need to do something for a thousand dollars. So he looks out into time and space and he said, who can I trust with the tithe? So because this person is trustworthy, he give them a hundred dollars because he need ten dollars to do his work. Are you seeing it? So then God says, I need $50,000 to do the work. I have a new job. I need $50,000 to do the work. So he looks out and he said, wait a minute. The last time I gave uh, Brittany her $100, she gave her $10 tithe. So she is willing to tithe. So I'm going to give her $50,000. Because I need $5,000 right now. Are you hearing me? So she came and she gave her $5,000 over fifty. dollars Look like Brittany's doing good. She still have forty-five. dollars And God says, okay, I'm a bless I, I, I can bless a tither. They're obedient. I can get my work done in the land because I can trust this person with the resources. So he said, okay. I need 50000 now. So he goes back out and he look at the tither. He says she was willing to tithe at 100 She was willing to tithe at 50000 Okay, I know what I'm going to do. So God orchestrate divinely. He says, how is it? He said, men will give into your bosom. So some of you will come into all kind of inheritance that you didn't see coming because you're a tither. Are you seeing? Some of you, you go to the gas station, you go like, I, I don't want pastor to say that I buy these tickets at all. But 
He's moving some money from those Massachusetts and all them people buying the, the thing. And he's giving you the winning numbers because she needs $50,000 to do the work. So he gives you $500,000 because he needs $50,000. And so now you have $500,000 and you're tired you give $50,000. And God says, ah, you're good. That's why you have $450,000. Oh, you understand in the economy of God. All he's asking you is to be trustworthy with what I'm giving to you. Be not because you're going to give it to some church or not because you're going to run out. You will never run out if you're tired. If you're tired, God will continue to increase you because he can trust you with his tithe. Are, are, you, are you understanding? So this is, this is not some hocus pocus fancy over the top. You don't have to come up with some teaching. And, hey, get a man, rob God. Yes, hi, rob God. With tithes and our friend. All you robbers out there, bring the tithes. And, we, we don't need to do that. Because your sowing is your expression of love and obedience and trust to God. That's all it is. It's no trick, no trade, no nothing to it. We don't need no fancy nothing. We just need to love God, love his work, and be obedient to him. And when you obey him, he will never let you run out. That's why he said, when you give it, I will cause men to give into your bosom, press down, and run it over. Shaken! There's no, there's no rocket science to it. It's not some fancy anything that God is trying to do. It's just because he's got stuff to do in the land and he's looking for some people that he can trust. That's all. That's all. So sowing is an important part because we want you blessed. It's not because we want your money because trust me, God has all kinds of ways of getting his work done. So listen, what am I saying? So what are we about? We're about souls. We're about a place to serve. We're about a place where love is expressed and we're a place that you can release your tithes. The offering is up to you. Your offering is up to you. But the tithe is the Lord's. Tithe means a tent. The offering is up. You can do any amount of offering you want to do. But before you do offering, you must do tithe. That, the tithe is not yours. To, you can't give from your tithe. The tithe is the Lord's. You have to bring the tithe. That's the Lord. So you bring it out of your house. You get that holy thing out of your house. That's why the Bible says the man who steals the tithe, his pockets always have hold. That's why you can't prosper. It's not because God got anything against you. It's because you're not doing what he asked you to do. So you're, the more you try to save it to get out of your mess is the more you lose. It's no science to it. It's no magic to it. It's just because you're just not doing it God's way. So we set the place up as a place where you tithe so that you can be blessed. Are you with me? Is that clear? So that's why sowing is an important part of what new season is about. Now I want you to understand that it's because of your faithfulness for the last four and a half years. Why we are still here and we don't owe rent. We don't owe for light. It's paid every month. Not because we're selling anything out the new season. But because you gave. You do. You gave. You did it. We're here in these chairs and in this room with light and air conditioning because you did it. And God said, come up higher, man. You know, some people go... The tithe's 120, and they'll give 100. Why you stop at 100? Do 120 and be in obedience for God to just release his blessing on you. You see what I'm saying? I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to get your money because you ain't got nothing but what God has given to you, and he will take it from you. So, so that's why it's okay that there is sowing there. So we're about souls. We're about four S's. Soul, say it. Souls, serve, show, and sow. Say it again. Souls, serve, so, and sow. Let it stick into your heart. It is designed to bless you.